What are the long-term effects of alternate nostril breath? Hello, my name is Tom Gillette, and I have taught breathing techniques to tens of thousands of students for over three decades. I have an online breath program that could change your life in remarkable ways. First, a bold statement. Alternate nostril breath is the most important yoga technique ever discovered. Alternate nostril breath is the most important yoga technique ever discovered? This viewpoint has actually been echoed by many teachers over the centuries. In recent times, a very influential man named Swami Kripalu had these words to say, soul and breath have a very deep friendship. Among the techniques of yoga, the breathing practices are the main ones. Pranayama, breathing practices, are the soul of yoga. It is yoga. Alternate nostril breath is the principal practice and the one that is good for all. Okay, so what is alternate nostril breath for those of you who haven't heard of this practice? In the simplest of terms, you inhale through one nostril and then you inhale through the other. You inhale through one nostril and then you inhale through the other? What is the big deal? That should make no difference. Left or right, the breath goes into the lungs and it's all just oxygen, right? Right? The origin of some confusion has been generated by yoga teachers speaking carelessly and saying things like, feel the oxygen going to the left side of your brain. The scientifically oriented, medically aware person who looks like this says, Nonsense, oy vey, don't you know basic physiology? Or the yoga teacher doubles down and says, feel the energy, the mystical prana, the universal chi, to which some scientifically minded person might say, that is worse, you have lost me. I therefore conclude that this is all superstition and not worthy of my attention. Well, what can be said of alternate nostril breath? No one has proved the exact objective mechanism by which this happens. But generally, we can say what is subjectively experienced by many yogis. So here we go. You sit down with your mindfulness meditation, and the first thing you notice is that your body hurts, and there is thinking and language and words and ideas and voices, 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 and the voices never stop, and you quite possibly get frustrated and bored, and this is where 95% of most people quit. Right at the very beginning. Yeah, I'm all good with that. It's too hard. I'm done. Well, I have good news for those people. There is another way. Prepare your mind and body. Yogis discovered that the breath and the mind are linked. Change the breath and you change the mind. So how can someone change the state of mind using the breath? Well. You need a system like this next breath. This is an active intervention that is done before meditation. You need a breath system that mechanically quiets the voices in your head. I've been teaching these breathing practices to tens of thousands of people for 30 years, so I know they work and they're very safe and accessible to anybody who truly follows the steps of this program. You can do these practices in a chair. This next breath is a modern breath practice based in an ancient tradition. For the yogis who already do many breathing practices, you will be delighted by this program that will give you critical details that will make your practice take off. The system looks like this. Put these together, practice them every day, and you get a powerful life-changing result. So let's get back to alternate nostril breath. How does that work internally? You've completed the mind-breath preparation, and your mind is now curiously quiet. The voices are not so loud. And then you will observe moments when there's a wordless presence. These gaps are small at first, but you learn how to extend them. Extending them happens naturally and spontaneously with the breath work. You don't need to force them. You learn to have quiet moments in a very aware, silent space. A silence you maybe thought was not possible. 
Instead of being in your head all the time, preoccupied with thoughts, language, and the voices, you shift towards being with sensations and the next arising breath. That's all there is. Sensations and this next breath. With a quiet mind, you inhale through one nostril, and then you inhale through the other nostril, following the method of the program. And not much happens. You can't quite figure out the fingering technique. Your nose is stuffy. There's problems. This is where another 20% of the survivors quit within the first few minutes because they don't understand what it is. They don't understand why they're practicing, but you persevere. Eh, not much happens. Inhale through the left, inhale through the right. At some point, the tiniest inkling of a shift happens. When you breathe into the right nostril, you start to feel sensations on the right side of the body, little sparkles, tingles. When you breathe into the left nostril, you start to feel sensations in the left side of the body, little points of light, the right side of the body. Metaphorically, the masculine side, the solar side, lights up with tingles. Then the left side of the body, the female side, the lunar side of the body lights up. Right side, left side, back and forth. Then comes a shocking realization the male and female sides of my body are profoundly different in ways I never knew. And then you start to feel really good. Alternate nostril breath is also called happy breath. Sukha pranayama. It makes you feel good inside. A profound sense of wellness happens. And this is where 95% of the yogis who made it this far, they quit. They quit right now. They feel good. They got what they come for. Done. Emblazoned on the wall of my dear yoga studio, the eyes of the world in Providence, Rhode Island, we had these great phrases. What you practice gets stronger. What you focus on gets bigger. What you keep doing is who you become. And so you continue to practice on a regular daily basis. And that is the only way this happens. Practice, practice, practice. None of this happens if you just think about it or watch videos or talk about anatomy. It is about creating a new habit in your life. You need a structure, daily inspiration, constant reminders that you follow every day. Time passes. And then one day you will notice that the sensations are brighter now and they are obvious. It is no longer subtle. One side of your body is filled with light, which I assume is increased neural activity. Then the other side of the body becomes full of sensation, full of light, back and forth male and female, sun and moon, right and left. It is like a body, mind, breath massage. You will notice your eyes become especially filled with sensation. They're very sensitive. The hypothesis is that this is not a rush of only feel-good chemicals. Something is profoundly changing on a physical, neurological basis. The nervous system is growing and changing according to how we use the attention and the breath. It's not a static situation, but one that evolves slowly over time. Finally, the whole body becomes evenly filled with presence. There is a sense of being fully connected. What was dark is now light. The body parts you felt disconnected to before you are now intimately in touch with. Metaphorically, the male and the female have become one. In the center of the brain, the sun opens up. This is probably why Swami Kripalu and countless yogis through the millennia 
have claimed that this is the most important yoga technique of all. Prediction. In 2018, American yoga is still in its infancy. You will see more and more pranayama breathing classes being offered in the coming decades. It is where the yoga tradition is headed. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. There is many more details to fill in here, and the learning never stops for anybody ever, me especially. And I will end with this well-known quote. I hear and I forget. I see and I remember. I do and I understand. You can find this next breath at TomGillette.com.